Hello everyone, Ron here from LTL Tutoring Central and it's Friday again and this week I'm talking about the IEP or Individualized Education Program, sometimes called Individualized Education Plan, but IEP for short. And uh, you may be on an IEP or your child might be on an IEP or you may be planning to put your child on an IEP. And uh, Today I'm not talking about whether you should or shouldn't have an IEP. I'm not even really talking about all the pros and cons, although I'm getting into that a little bit, uh, it's a bit of a warning. Because sometimes you hear, I have an IEP, so I can't fill in the blank. And I say, yes, you can. Or at least, yes, you should try. And the issue is, when you have an individualized education program, the expectations are usually lowered you're provided with accommodations and you're allowed extra time, etc. Which is great in theory. It's great in the idea of it. But what often happens is students, particularly younger students, a lot of parents, and unfortunately even some teachers who should know better, see the IEP as a destination or as a goal. And it isn't, or it shouldn't be. The IEP, or the Individualized Education Program, is only a tool. It's just a tool to get you to your goals. Your goals should be far more than any IEP. Why do I say this? I say it because over t for over 20 years now, I've seen a lot of students on IEP programs, and most of the time, this is what happens. The expectations are lowered. Sometimes they do 50% of the math. You know, say they're in grade six, they do half of the test. They do half of the practice questions. Unfortunately, sometimes they don't do half of all the questions. So if they're only doing the top half of the page, they're often not getting any of the more complex questions. So sometimes teachers or sometimes administrators don't always um, uh, deliver the program in the best way either. So as parents, or even if you're a student, you have to be your own best uh, mentor. You have to work to make sure that that IEP tool is being used effectively. Students, particularly young ones, but even high school students, will often uh, aim for the lowest expectations. So why not? I mean, in a way, you have to you have to understand that it makes sense. If if a student was working hard and struggling to get a C or even a D, and then they get onto an IEP program, they're working just as much, possibly even less, and now they're getting A's and B's. Why work harder? Why should I try? <coughs> excuse me, or push myself to achieve more when I can do less and I'm getting even better grades? So there's absolutely no incentive to uh, push myself. So parents, you have to make sure that you're monitoring your children, monitoring their progress, monitoring their IEP, go to the meetings, make sure that the IEP changes. It's a tool that should be dynamic. It shouldn't stay the same. And it should change over time as the student begins to get better in whatever weak area. Sometimes it's only for one subject. Sometimes it's across the board or for two or three subjects, but in whatever areas are weak, you need to monitor, you need to see, can Johnny now write sentences on his own? Can we, can we move this up? Can we change the IEP so that he's doing paragraphs, so that he's getting closer to maybe grade level writing <coughs> at some point, or if it's math, the same idea. Always try to challenge the student, whether it's your child, whether you're a teacher teaching, or whether you're a student yourself. Always challenge yourself, always try to achieve more, not less. And that's the problem with the IEP. Many, many times uh, people see it as a destination. Yay, I can relax now. I don't have to work so hard and I'll still get the grade. Yes, you might get the grade. You might not have to work so hard. But when you're finished, you also won't have the education that you require. And that's sad. And you may think I'm telling a story here over 20 years, I've seen cases, many of them. Uh, one adult even wanted to sue the school system because he had graduated from grade 12 with his diploma, had a high school diploma, and uh, he worked for a while at one job. Then he wanted to do another job, 
And to do that job, you had to pass a test. And to pass the test, you had to read a manual. And the manual at the very first page said you need a minimum grade 10 reading level to read the manual, comprehend what it says, and prepare for the test. When I assessed him, because he was having a really difficult time, he could not understand the manual, he couldn't get into it, he had tried it on his own. Then he came to me, and the very first day I noticed his reading was quite weak. And I said, this may be the issue. Let's do an assessment and see what level you're at. He was at a level 6 at best, probably level 5. He graduated high school, he got his grade 12, but he could only read at a grade 5 or 6 level, meaning there was no way at that moment that he could read that manual and pass that test. So he was very angry. He couldn't get this job. He couldn't even try for it, uh, at least not right away. It was going to take him a lot longer to get ready to do the test and to do the job. And that's the whole point. If you don't have the education, if you're not able to do the job, you're not going to last. Even if you get the job, you're not going to last very long. So you need to fight to get your education. Do not allow an IEP to drag you down. I had another student. I'll give you another case study. Uh, young student, grade 6, had a very low reading score on his report card. And yet when I assessed him, his reading score was extremely high. It was came out at age 15 plus, which he was nowhere near 15 years old. That would be a high school level. And, uh, but what was happening was he wasn't comprehending everything he was reading, and he was having a difficult uh, writing things down on paper. So he was on an IEP, or he was put on an IEP rather, and the expectations were lowered. And now he had someone to read to him, and he had a scribe to write down his answers and to write down what he said. This is perfectly fine as a tool to get you to the next step. But he didn't need somebody to read to him. He needed somebody to help him with comprehension. He didn't really need a scribe either, although that might be a temporary relief so that he could focus more on the reading and comprehension side of it. But over time, he needed to reduce the amount that the scribe was doing and increase the amount that he was doing so that he could move forward. Too often, they don't move forward. I saw a student, another student, in grade three, came to tutoring for a while, he was struggling with reading and writing, and math actually, but mostly reading and writing. They left tutoring for a while, they phoned me, came back when he was in grade six, I did the assessment, he hadn't moved at all. He was exactly at the same reading and writing level as he was when he left three years ago. The school system, the IEP program that he was on, was not changing, he was not changing, nothing had been done to ensure that he was growing and learning. Now we're not all going to be A students, we're not all going to be able to do everything that everyone else can do, everyone is different, but you want to reach the highest goal that you can. He stayed at tutoring for a while, he began to move very quickly and he didn't get up to grade level right away but he was moving toward it, and he was reading better, and he was writing better, and he was improving, and he was getting an education, and he was becoming more confident. So as a parent, as a teacher, you have to make sure that the student is learning. And if you're a student, fight for your right to learn. I've had students do that. Another student of mine, another case study if you like, young student, very young when he came to me, in grade three, it's actually just out of grade two, and uh, couldn't read at all, nothing really. And he could write his name, not his last name, only his first name. Very, very low level on reading and writing. No reading, actually. And we began working, and we discovered that, although he was an IEP, they hadn't noticed that he wasn't scanning the page correctly. And in order for you to read, you absolutely have to know how to scan a page, how to look at the page. Start at the top left, move to the right. Normally we get that on our own, but he hadn't, he hadn't got that. He hadn't learned that. It had to be taught. And once he started doing that, the reading started to come. It didn't come quickly. It wasn't a magic solution. I don't want to give you a false uh, story here of how amazing tutoring is or how wonderful I am. 
It was just hard work, and it was paying attention, and it was noticing. School can't do that all the time because there's so many students. But what a, what a teacher and what a parent can do is just ensure that things are moving forward, that you're not staying in the same place for three years. Something needs to change. If it's not working, something needs to change. So always monitor the IEP and remember it's only a tool that you use to reach the goal which is to get the most education you can, not the least. You always want to work hard to get where you want to go. And I have complete confidence. I've seen so many students, ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, autism, Asperger's, Down syndrome students, students with Tourette's, all kinds of students, all kinds and straight A students as well. I've worked with all different kinds of students and I have never ever seen a student who didn't improve with practice, with effort, and with some guidance sometimes. I've never seen a case where a student didn't improve and didn't begin to learn. As I say, they don't all become A plus students necessarily, but they definitely learn and they definitely progress. And sometimes it is quite amazing what they can accomplish. It's far beyond what they thought and it's sometimes far beyond what I thought as well. But I knew they would get better. So stick with it. If you get an IEP or if you're planning on getting an IEP for your child, just make sure that you monitor it, you use it as a tool, you don't use it as an excuse, you don't use it as a way out. It isn't a way out. It is a way forward. If it's used properly, it can be great. If it's not used properly, I'm afraid that it will destroy your education for a while at least until somebody somewhere wakes up and realizes, hey, I can't read and write. I can't do math at anywhere near the level that I need even for just life, let alone. You don't need to be a mathematician. So I want you to do the best that you can. So read the blog. The blog has three different case studies that I didn't even talk about briefly in this video and has a little bit more information as well. I'll put the link below. I'll also put a link to the website if you do want some extra help, some tutoring help, I am available and I'd love to work with you or your child to help them achieve the most that they can. And uh, I'll put some links uh, possibly to some other resources as well. Each video is a little different each week. So that's it for today. I've kind of rambled on a little bit, but I just wanted to get the point across that the IEP is a tool, not a destination. It's not the end result. It's not a goal. It's just a step toward reaching your goals. So keep pushing forward. Do not just relax on that individualized education program. Ron from LTL Tutoring Central. Have an amazing day, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.